Welcome back everyone to another downward day. I'm sitting here right next to the local state road because today's video is going to be based on traffic. More so traffic laws and particularly one certain traffic law that caused me to get a ticket that I felt was completely unfair, ridiculous, superfluous, and a complete overstep in the power of the state to actually enforce traffic safety. So uh, frequent viewers of the channel may know that I tend to drive a lot and I tend to record and drive a lot, but I've honestly been doing it a lot less. I've been taking my little GoPro into public parks and uh, sort of walking around there more often than uh, taking it out on the roads, driving. And uh, there's a specific reason for that because back in last November, there was a little incident that happened to me while I was recording out on the roads. And um, if you happen to tune in to the uh, Lewis Rossman response video, you will know exactly what that incident is because it was caught on camera and left in the video. That's right, because in that moment, live while recording another edition of the Downward Diary, I was pulled over by a police officer and cited with a traffic infraction. Oh boy, Lawbreaker Emp, what did he do this time? Hell raisin Lawbreaker Emp. What per se, what could he have possibly done to earn that $135 ticket from the always courteous and professional St. Lucie County Police Department? What could I have done, huh? Could I have been speeding? I don't know, a good guess, but uh, not quite on the mark. You see, I for one have always been quite cognizant of how dangerous the roads in this country are. So for all intents and purposes, I try the best I can to be a safe driver. I tend to stay a little bit far away from the edge of control because make no mistake about it, to be out here in the middle of these roads, it's dangerous. People die. People die all the time. I think pretty much everyone who lives in the United States of America either knows someone directly or knows someone who knows someone else who has been seriously injured or died in a car accident. These roads are no joke. No matter how carefree some of these wonderful drivers out there seem to act on them, these roads play host to a bloodbath. People go out there every single day and lose their lives. And that's sort of a, uh, I guess, heavy, heavy topic that a lot of people on the roads tend to forget and end up contributing to a lot of these fatal accidents. So I've always had a deep respect for the safety of the roadway. I usually, most of the time I'm on the roads, I don't even speed. I know it's a given, at least in this country, that you're given like five to seven miles an hour over the speed limit for free. But honestly, oftentimes when I'm driving, I don't tend to go above the speed limit. And there's been numerous occasions where I've been in a convoy going down the road with other people, friends, and we're going off on some road trip to some destination where I've gotten complaints about driving too slow, about driving too timidly and driving like a grandma and that I should pick up the pace, you know, pick up the pace in this busy workaday world. Seems like everyone's in a hurry to get somewhere at all times. But with that being said, you must not lose sight of how it takes one, one mistake and you're in a life ruining event life ruining, severe injury, severe disfigurement, permanent alterations to your health, if not instant death. That's what you're facing out on these roads. Even if you're lucky enough to physically get out of the situation unscathed, a very simple accident, even going at 20 miles an hour or so, that's enough to set you back financially for a year, years even. It's enough to set you back legally we got all these law firms around here. Morgan & Morgan is probably the biggest one, the single biggest one in this area. But yeah, the lawyers in this country, they're sharks circling in the water, accident attorneys, just waiting for someone to get in that tragic accident and they're chomping at the bit to find you at fault and potentially get you on the hook for tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions 
of dollars in damages. Simply driving on the road like all these people are doing right now, you're constantly running the risk of devastating health injuries, devastating financial setbacks, and devastating legal liability. This is the risk you run by being out there on the roads all the time. So uh, what arrogance you may have to, uh, to sort of skirt the line of acceptability while driving. Hell no, I say. I say, I'm gonna be about as prudent as I can to not unleash the amount of personal hell and torment that you can find yourself in by making one mistake. That's all it takes. One little mistake on the road and you're in a world of hurt, my friend. So when it comes to driving, I tend to take it easy, but not easy enough apparently to avoid a little run-in with our magnificent law enforcement officers. Now, in this video, I'm gonna to try to be impartial. I'm gonna to try to deliver an impartial objective argument and not allow my contempt for the police to come out as much. I'm gonna try very hard not to use the P word. And you all know <laughs> what I mean by that. But my opinions about the general police at large, that's gonna to have to wait until another time. For the specific purposes of our video today, we're gonna to be talking about one individual encounter with an officer. So it was the middle of November last year, November 2022, when I was driving down south on the floor of the turnpike, somewhere in the middle of the drag known as St. Lucie County, Florida. And in the waning hours of the day, as the sun was going down, I saw the wonderful sight of those red, white, and blue police lights right behind me in my rear view mirror. And uh, I was definitely very relieved to see such a pleasant sight. And I've been waiting ever since then to tell this story. I've been waiting for the matter to get resolved and it has been resolved. So now I'm free to let loose and talk about my opinions on this situation that I found myself in on that November day outside of the city of Port St. Lucie in the middle of the turnpike. So let's get into what really happened, shall we? Let's get into it. So I pull over, roll down the window, the officer comes up to me, this guy who can barely string together a coherent sentence because he's a high school dropout who joined the police force because he had no other options. This absolute buffoon of a man is issuing me this $135 ticket for allegedly passing an emergency vehicle and failing to move over a lane. That's right, that's, that's the issue that we're talking about today. The oh so important move over law, which has apparently infested the books on every single state in the good old US of A. So for the uninitiated out there, what exactly are the move over laws? Well, basically they stipulate that you, as a driver on an interstate highway, you must, you are required to move over for any sort of pulled over emergency vehicles. They say it's for emergency vehicles, but it really applies to utility vehicles, construction, all sorts of other basically professional people who as part of their jobs, they have to pull over on the shoulder of the road and complete some task as 70 mile per hour traffic is speeding by them. I did a little reading up on it. It turns out back in the 80s or something, some officer got creamed by an oncoming car in South Carolina or whatever. And now every state had to pass these laws requiring you requiring you by law for when you see one of these personnel, these official personnel, police officers, ambulance, construction on the side of the road, you're required by law to move a lane over, give an entire lane of separation. And if you fail to adequately do that, they can issue you a $135 traffic citation. Now, upon hearing that basic description, Many of you may be thinking, hey, Ev, what's the big deal? This sounds like a completely reasonable law to me. And you know what? That's how it is. It's one of these laws where when they go to draft it, when it's on the books, and when people think about it for two seconds without actually considering the deeper implications of what it actually means when it goes on the books, then yeah, it sounds like a perfectly reasonable law. Hell yeah, move over for our heroes, our heroes in uniform, heroes in ambulances, heroes in police cars. Got to move over for them. What kind of an evil person would want to bring unwilling harm to 
are oh so valiant and brave emergency responders. And yeah, maybe that's how I used to feel about it. Until I got pulled over and issued that ticket when it felt like I had pretty much done nothing wrong. And that's the way things are nowadays. It's super duper easy to get a bunch of legislation, predatory, unfriendly legislation to be passed just by making it about some nebulous issue of safety. But when you go to think about it critically, it doesn't seem to make any sense at all. So why is this law in place, huh? To protect emergency responders. That's what the officer was clumsily and haphazardly explaining to me in his rehearsed little speech about the issue. It's made to protect first responders on the side of the road. Oh, boo-hoo, poor them. Um, have you seen how dangerous the roads are in this country? Have you seen it? There's a guy biking past right now. Are you getting a nice look at that? Um, do people have to move over for him? There's no oncoming traffic right now, luckily, but I'm really wondering if people have to move over for that guy. Guy, defenseless bicyclist on the uh, attached bike lane right here with uh, 70 mile an hour traffic going past him. Do people have to move over for him or are uh, emergency responders somehow this protected class? This protected class who's supposed to uh, rule over for us. And you know, semantically speaking, when you first hear the words emergency responder, you're thinking of paramedics. You're thinking of people in an ambulance, people stretchering away some poor soul who got butchered on another day in this, the wonderful infrastructure of this country. That's what the phrase emergency responder actually evokes. Possibly, I don't know, something to do with an emergency where there is a time sensitive issue where if it's not completed within that time frame, serious dire consequences are to be had. That in my mind is the definition of an emergency, okay? Someone is probably gonna die if the system in place can't act quick enough or if it's being impeded by drivers in the road. And in that case, yeah, I'd be happy to move over. It's intuitive. You see those flashing lights, you know someone's hurt, you move over. When there's an ambulance coming behind you, speeding to the hospital, you move over. That's perfectly fine. That is not where my beef with this law lies. I'm perfectly fine dropping everything and yielding to paramedics, yielding to an actual emergency. Imagine that. But uh, riddle me this, riddle me this, everyone. Does it constitute an emergency when a random Joe Schmo's vehicle is abandoned on the shoulder of the turnpike. Is there anything really emergent about that situation? My God, rush out and get the tow truck. Someone get this disabled vehicle off the shoulder of the turnpike. Someone's gonna plow into it in a matter of five minutes unless we instantaneously remove this disabled vehicle. It's, it's an emergency. Is it an emergency? I mean, if you go down the roads long enough, you're bound to run into disabled vehicles all the time and probably not crash into them because you don't have spastic dystrophy behind the wheel. You're not expected to randomly get a seizure and veer off the road 20 feet and hit whatever thing and obstacle is parked on the shoulder of the highway that doesn't tend to happen under normal circumstances. So I don't know, isn't an emergency? Disabled vehicle on the shoulder of the turnpike, emergency. Because uh, the police officer just sitting there next to the car the law has done classified him as an emergency personnel. Oh boy. It doesn't matter one bit whether an actual emergency is taking place. Oh no. You still have to move over. And you have to move over. Or else. Or else you will be fined $135. Now if this was just a basic circumstance where I actually had a fair time to react to the situation, I would not be as indignant as I am now, but no, this is, this was something else. This was too convenient of a scenario for the officer for it to just have occurred organically. I am convinced, I am convinced that this, the Port St. Lucie Police Department, they set this up. They set it up for damn sure. Because this so-called disabled vehicle, this disabled vehicle on the shoulder of the turnpike that constitutes an emergency, apparently, it was positioned right after 
a highway overpass with the police officer parked in front of the disabled vehicle. And you know what this means, right? This means that I have as little time to actually see and react to the police officer as possible. He's right over the horizon line of a highway overpass and he's parked in front of the very real and organically placed disabled vehicle. So I'm supposed to believe that this police officer just so happened to be coincidentally perfectly positioned in a place where I would have the least possible time to actually react to the fact that his car was there and move over. And even still, even still, if you've ever been on the floor of the turnpike, you'll know that the shoulders there are absolutely huge. The police car was probably this distance from the road. If the road's there, I'm driving past there, the police car is probably standing where I am right now. That distance, that's how far I was from the police officer. And I did move over. I did by reaction, once I noticed the cop, I moved over to the edge of the lane I was in. There was more, more than enough space as I passed him. You could have driven two semi trucks in between me and that cop and still had room to spare. But um, Many of you are thinking, if you notice the cop, why didn't you just move over to the other lane? And uh, this, this distinction right here is where we separate the actual skilled drivers out there from amateur hour. Because uh, if you're not too familiar with the mechanics of driving a vehicle, and if you do happen to drive often and still don't know this, then you need to stay the hell away from me. Because most vehicles out there, most vehicles on the road, they have this thing known as a blind spot on the side of the vehicle. It's a part of the visual field not covered by the rear view mirror and the side view mirror. Those mirrors in tandem are not enough to cover the entire visual space around you, which means that if you're driving, especially at high speeds, there are dangerous, potentially deadly situations that can arise when you change lanes without checking your blind spot. Small vehicles and motorcycles and a ton of other stuff could be there next to you. And if you haven't been consistently surveilling the road and paying attention to every single vehicle around you at all times, there's really no way of knowing if another driver is there in your blind spot. So when you switch lanes without checking your blind spot, you are endangering yourself and someone else on the road. Plain and simple. I know a lot of vehicles today come with little auto assist beep 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 warning signs, warning triggers so that you don't actually have to pay attention to safety on the roads and you can just be as much of an incompetent re exceptional individual that you possibly can be because you have driving assists enabled. My car doesn't. Imagine that, my car doesn't. So, so guess what? What does that imply? If I'm supposed to make this knee jerk reaction moving over for this police officer that's 20 feet to the side of me. If I have to move over for him on reaction, it's too fast, it's too quick of a move for me to position myself, swivel my head to check my blind spot to confirm that no one is beside me and to confirm that I'm not about to get into a completely avoidable accident. And by that point, when I finally mentally registered that the police officer was even present in the situation because he was so conveniently positioned to give me as little reaction time as possible to see him. When I finally registered that point, I was already basically passing him. And I did, I did instinctually move over to the edge of my own lane. But crossing the other lane intuitively was a complete no go. Someone could have been there and I could have gotten in an accident for no reason. So I ended up going with this completely remarkable idea of just going in a straight line continuing forward in a straight line. Apparently illegal. Apparently, I hadn't done enough. I needed to put three semi-trucks of space in between me and that fat-headed officer. And maybe I should have ended up switching lanes anyway, even after the point when I passed him, where it would have been completely pointless as an actual safety measure. Because if you're already past the officer and your momentum's carrying you 
forward. You're at no risk to hit him anyway. So what difference is changing the lane going to make? But maybe I should have done that. It would have gotten me out of a ticket because apparently just going at a constant speed under the speed limit in a straight line is now enough to get you a ticket, a $135 ticket in certain jurisdictions in this wonderful, safe country of ours. Aren't you glad we're so safe in this country? Aren't you glad you could just walk along the side of this road and there ain't no law telling any of these people to move over? Hell, dude, before I even started recording this rant video, I saw a dude in mobility scooter in the bike lane. It didn't seem like people were moving over for him. It's only, it's only our valued, it's only our valued emergency responders who deserve that privilege. Regular people, pedestrians, completely defenseless pedestrians who don't have a state-of-the-art armored police vehicle to get into. There ain't no laws helping them out. There ain't no move over laws for them, little pedestrian Joe. Uh, you know what, in fact, in fact, while you're watching this video, you're gonna be seeing footage of me. I'm gonna walk down this road. I'm gonna walk the line, all right? I'm gonna walk the line, semi close to the road, at least closer than where that officer was that I passed who decided to hand me that generous ticket of his. I'm gonna walk along the road and we'll see. We'll see how many people feel obligated to move over for me. And here's a spoiler for you guys, before I even go and do it, I can already tell you for a fact that they won't. Especially police officers. Because I've gone biking. I've gone biking on the bike lane down this very road. And this was after. This was after I got served my nice dose of humble pie in the form of a $135 ticket. I tried biking down this road one time. And boy, I'll tell you, it's an experience I have no intent on trying again because it is white knuckle dangerous. You feel like you're about to die at any second. But you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing I'm so valued as a pedestrian. I'm so valued as a citizen of this country. I'm not part of a protected emergency responder class that there's no laws on the books telling people to move over for me, including police officers, because guess what? As I'm going down in my bike, and my God, I wish I was recording. And maybe we'll get another one here, who knows. But cop didn't move over for me. Cops don't have to move over for you as a pedestrian. The cop can go ahead and slide on over to one inch away from obliterating you and killing you instantly. And they don't have to do shit. But oh, little old Emp Lemon trying to get through St. Lucie County, the greatest county in Florida. Definitely not home to the most psychotic and disgusting people in this entire state. Going through St. Lucie County in a straight line with 20 plus feet of space in between me and that officer, that's too much. That's endangering an officer's life. You get a ticket and my God, could I tell it was a setup. It was a predatory setup to exploit this law. This law, which maybe at one point in history had good intentions. No, it's going to be used as a weapon to bludgeon you and suck money out of your bank account for daring to pass through certain unscrupulous police department's jurisdictions. Because good God, the rehearsed, insincere speech this officer gave me. It sounded like, it sounded like he was taking my order at McDonald's. A completely rehearsed word salad of incoherent babble talking about, oh, dude, sir, did you know that you, uh, I never graduated high school. Oh, sir, did you know that uh, officers are put in danger every day? Hmm, yeah, you became a police officer. Couldn't imagine that would be a dangerous job. Better put in a law to suck money out of people, to extort people just by passing you in a straight line and posing no threat whatsoever. But oh yeah, I'm a huge sympathy. Huge sympathy for the guy who willingly joined a dangerous profession or allegedly dangerous. I mean, it's like police are meant to help us, right? Police are meant to go after the bad guys who are trying to cause us harm. It's not like they sit on their ass all day eating donuts and handing out traffic tickets. That can't be what it is at all. No, it, it is a dangerous job. Maybe I'm contradicting myself here, but the fact of the matter remains, this guy was bumbling through this rehearsed speech, tripping over his words. He needed his cue cards in front of him. His cue cards, because I was probably the 10th or 12th person that day that he gave this same speech to. Oh, sir, did you know that uh, officers are injured by uh, passing cars? 
and that is the law to uh, move over, move over for officer, so uh, officers don't get hurt and killed in the line of duty. Oh, wow, couldn't imagine that. You're starting to stumble over your words a bit, buddy. Might want to pay a little bit more attention to the teleprompter, you know? And boy, howdy, did I present such a threat to you. Such a threat to you that it constituted giving me a traffic ticket and trying to put points on my license. To stand there and look me in the eye and try to claim that I was endangering you in any way. How I, going in a straight line at a constant stable speed, was somehow acting irresponsibly by not moving over. Yes, let's force a lane change. Those things don't tend to cause accidents, right? Let's force this active, active vehicular movement. That's gonna be super safe for everyone. Let's force them to do it and not even have enough time to check their blind spot because I'm an emergency personnel. I'm responding to an emergency, a contrived disabled vehicle that you put there on purpose, allegedly. Oh, but Amp, you're just bitter that you got a ticket. No one who gets a ticket thinks they did anything wrong. I'm trying to tell you guys, I really didn't do anything wrong. And five miles down the road from this guy, there was another identical setup. Another cop and another allegedly disabled vehicle. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, they were doing the same thing. They were trying to get suckers like me going down the road, minding their own business, going at a steady speed in a straight line under the speed limit, trying to make that a traffic violation. Because everyone's caught on to speed traps now. You've heard of the speed trap. Everyone's heard of the speed trap. People use Waze and Google and report the speed traps. So they ain't working anymore. They ain't extorting enough money from the citizens. So we gotta try new tactics. We gotta try new tactics. Oh, how about the move over law? How about we intentionally position our cop cars in hard to see areas and then when people inevitably aren't able to react in time, surprise, surprise, you were too close to a vehicle. Here's a rehearsed, insincere speech about how I felt endangered as an officer in my armored vehicle. My armored $120,000 police squad car. I felt endangered by you. It doesn't matter if you're a pedestrian. It doesn't matter if you're on a bicycle. It doesn't matter if you're on a mobility scooter on the road. Hell, on the interstate, they'll arrest you. They'll fine you. They'll kick you off the interstate for even walking on it as a pedestrian. There's an admission that it's so obviously unsafe out there that you're gonna be found in criminal contempt for even thinking about going for a walk on our nation's interstates. So not, not only do people not have to move over for you when you're walking on the interstate, you're at fault. You're gonna face criminal charges. You're gonna be fined and assessed a ticket and given a misdemeanor for walking on the highway as a pedestrian. Why? I don't know. Maybe because it's so stupidly obvious that it's dangerous to be on the highway. It's dangerous to be on the shoulder of the highway. There's hundreds and thousands of cars going by at 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. It's dangerous. Who would have thought? Apparently not police officers. Oh, when the police officer gets tragically hit and killed on the side of the road, something has to be done about it. We have to pass this law to allow police officers and police agencies to extort people, to act as the mosquitoes and leeches which they are. Because now if you're just plodding along in your car, in cruise control, in a straight line, with no possible threat of ever veering off in any sort of circumstance, you are now posing a threat to the officer on the shoulder of the highway. If you're a defenseless pedestrian, you're on your own, pal. My armored police vehicle can swipe within an inch of your elbow and I won't have to deal with any consequences. No one has to deal with any consequences. There's no laws on the book. There's no move over law for the pedestrian. It's only us, the, the protected class, the oh so important emergency personnel. We're the only emergency you deal with in an entire month span is trying as hard as you can to meet the quota for the month on tickets that you have to dish out. That seems to be the only emergent behavior out of any of these cops. I get the privilege, Officer Numbskull, I get the privilege of forcing you, forcing you to make an active traffic move and put yourself in danger. 
to form a little bubble of invincibility around me because I'm a protected class. I'm better. I am literally more valuable than you. So I get laws protecting me. While you, if you're a pedestrian or a cyclist or anyone, defenseless, defenseless people, you don't get jack on the books because one cop got hit on the side of the road in the 80s. So now it's fair, it's totally fair and reasonable to dish out $135 tickets on people in cruise control under the speed limit going in a straight line. This is necessary, it's all necessary for safety, for safety, to protect our emergency personnel, to protect our first responders. Oh, but what about protecting me? Uh, no, you don't get any of that. My fat ass enormous police vehicle can swipe within an inch of you while you're biking down the road completely defenselessly. But when you come within 20 feet of my car, you have to pay up. You pay up, you worthless, pathetic peon. You are beneath us. We are the police. We are a protected class. We are the star of the show. We have invincible star powers from Mario. So don't you dare even look in our direction or else you will be on the hook for a fine, a fine that you will be forced by law to pay. Sheesh guys, can you tell that I kind of don't think that this traffic law is very fair? And I kind of don't agree with the fact that I had to pay $135 for going at a constant speed under the speed limit in a straight line. So since when, since when have we reached this point as a society where punitive action is necessary for the potential you didn't do anything wrong. You had the potential of something going wrong. An infinitesimally small potential, I might add. As in the use case that this law is trying to protect against by dishing out all these fines, it's implying that you're gonna literally have a one in a million epileptic seizure or a heart attack just as the moment that you're passing by the police officer. So you gotta add that extra lane, that extra margin of error as if you're like not a functioning human with a brain who can keep a vehicle in a straight line, which is literally the most required basic skill to drive. They're anticipating that you're just gonna randomly forget that or become incapacitated just for some inexplicable reason and ram into the police officer. Like what? Do you have a little minority report, Oracle in a bathtub somewhere in the St. Lucie County Police Department basement? Is that what this is? Is that where my extorted ticket money is going to, to fund the minority report oracle that you've got sitting there in your police station for apparently accusing me of a crime that hasn't happened. I'm getting punished for a crime that hasn't happened. How about when someone, how about when someone actually, actually hits a police officer on the side of the road? Maybe that's when it actually might be fair to take punitive action instead of punishing me for something that didn't happen for not hitting the police officer. Whatever happened to punishing people when a crime has actually occurred? When someone was, I don't know, injured? When someone was negatively affected by my actions in any conceivable way? Because I'd be hard pressed to say the wind coming off my car 20 feet away caused any sort of harm to that officer. But no, 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 I'm foolish, you know, it's all about safety. It's all about the potential of something happening. You just get punished on potential. You get punished on the one in a million chance that you randomly swerve 20 feet to the right and hit the guy. It might as well be the same thing. That's the hazardous situation. This officer sitting there writing me the ticket, ordering me to pay $135, acting like I posed any sort of threat to him, any threat at all, acting like I literally tried to chase him off the road and run him over with my car. Hell, for $135, I might as well have just been going 100 you're apparently equally as likely to get in a horrendous officer injuring accident going 100 as you are going 65 in a straight line. So congratulations, congratulations, St. Lucie County government. You got my money, extortion complete. And I was luckily, fortunately able to get out of having points on my license because I contacted the ticket clinic. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. I just honestly used their service and had a positive result. The ticket clinic, traffic attorneys, they went to court for me and talked me out of getting adjudicated and getting points on my license. And I'd honestly recommend anyone who feels like they got a bullshit ticket like I did 
talk to some kind of traffic attorney to go to court on your behalf and argue it down, argue down the sentence, and at least make sure you don't get points on your license. Yeah, it's gonna cost you legal fees, probably around the price of the ticket itself, but it's gonna end up paying for itself because of the amount you'll save by not having your insurance rates jacked up from getting points on your license. But beyond even any sort of the money aspect, you should take satisfaction in not giving these police departments the privilege of bullying and pushing people around the way they do. Handing out expensive, extortive, nonsensical tickets to law-abiding, safe drivers like myself, like it's nothing. You should do what you can to not give them the privilege and the satisfaction of getting one over on you like that. I still had to end up paying the fine. Yeah, it sucks, of course, but the collateral damage was minimized, just like the supposed oh-so-important collateral damage that can be prevented by having this law in place. The one in a million chance that someone randomly forgets to drive their car when they're next to a police officer, or they're drunk driving, or texting and driving, which are already illegal. I'm glad that this oh-so-necessary and valuable law is on the books to treat drivers like myself to such a wonderful experience. I'm so glad that the law thinks so highly of our wonderful ethical police officers because they sure as hell don't think that way about you and me. Oh, that guy had plenty of space to move over. Not for me, a pedestrian, because there's no laws protecting pedestrians. Wonderful. Can't imagine why this is so confusing. Can't imagine why all of a sudden someone wouldn't feel instinctually necessary to move over for a police officer. Because uh, you sure as hell don't have to move over for pedestrians. I imagine it gives a lot of people the impression that you can just do this. Oh, but you can't. For emergency personnel. Whew. That truck would have obliterated me. I would have been red mist. It was just a couple feet away from me. Good thing there's no laws actually uh, protecting me as a defenseless pedestrian. Only cops, only cops get the law. And it doesn't matter if there's an emergency happening or not. There's still an emergency personnel, so they need to be protected. No matter how menially ridiculous the problem they're dealing with is. Oh, cop, right there, do you see that? He was trying to move over. Whole lot of cops right there. Funnily enough. Man, I can't believe those police cars didn't move over for me, those police officers. They saw me, an innocent stranded pedestrian right here on the side of the road, and they didn't move over. They should have just blindly changed lanes into the car next to them, completely ignoring their blind spot. They should have just done that. That's a totally reasonable expectation to have for all these people out here on the road, just blindly change lanes. They should have done it for me. And since they didn't, they deserve to get a $135 fine each.